Well, this morning in Mr. Rogers neighborhood, it's a two degree day. Uh, doesn't normally happen in middle Tennessee, but uh, what do you do? Uh, so I locked myself in the garage with the heater blasting on high and it's about 50 degrees in here. So it's not terrible, but it's not, uh, it's not ideal for uh, working on stuff. Uh, if you hit your fingers, it's just to the point where it gets, it, it tingles, right? So no big deal. Uh, we'll get onto something I've been wanting to do for a long time. Um, in a community post I did probably four or five months ago, I showed a, uh, valve guide in a 350 Buick head on the project boat anchor, uh, cylinder heads that, uh, one of the guides was absolutely trashed. It was actually egg shaped and, um, it was because the plastic button that holds the later style Buick rocker arms on had broken and it had been driven for a long time with a broken rocker arm button. Uh, I'm sure it made all kinds of clattering noises, but people didn't care as long as it ran, right? So, and, and you gotta remember, it, it probably happened somewhere in the 70s and, uh, you know, you just do what you do. So, as long as it's still running on eight, they kept it going, but it ended up just trashing the guide. And so, instead of having the guides, you know, redone at a machine shop where it's gonna cost, you know, a couple hundred bucks, um, and then you, you virtually feel guilty because the other head probably needs some work done too. My friend Deke, who is actually the tech guy for the AHRA, uh, sent me a, uh, well, he called me um, when I showed that community post and he said, hey, I got some tools for that. Uh, they used to make a thing called burnishing tool and I'd never heard of them. And I thought, okay, well, what do you got? And he's like, I have a set of these burnishing tools for three eighths valves, I'll send them to you try it out, see how it works. Worst case scenario, at that point, you gotta take it and have guides put in, which is where we stand at now. Run the burnishing tool through it and uh, put a valve in it. So <laughs> maybe we'll be okay. And he, he told me this is how the shops used to do it um, instead of taking to the machine shop. So I thought, all right, well, I'll try it out. It's worth a try. So we're going to sit, well, you're gonna sit down. I'm gonna stand up and get to work and we're gonna put something together that's, uh, 1970s 80-esque uh, at a, any regular shop around the country. This is how they used to fix the valve guides before you went to the machine shop. So sit back, crack a cold one, and check things out. Like I said in the intro, I've never done this before. Um, this is something that is the, a lot of the old school guys used to do this as routine practice. Uh, we're going to go ahead and try <clears throat> to fix the guide in this one cylinder head, this is for the Boat Anchor 350. You, you essentially have um, a tool that expands the size of the guide uh, just by putting threads into it. And then you have the actual tool that cuts it down to the exact same size that you need. In this case, the Buick 350 and the 400 through 455 were all 3 8 inch uh, valve stems, which is a large valve stem. Now the Buick V6, the 300, 340, 215 all use an 11 30 seconds uh, guide. And um, these 3 8 guides are a lot of the, you find them more or less in the later 60s. They were always afraid that, you know, you needed more valve spring. So to make sure that the valve spring was strong enough, you had to have a valve that would retain it. Uh, you find a lot of the earlier GM stuff is 11 30 seconds. Then it went to the 3 8 And then they went back to uh, 11 30 seconds um, more or less because they became like eight millimeter valves which is essentially almost an 11 30 second so um, this is something that's new to me and, and luckily Deke sent me this write up about six to eight months ago we're going to be following Deke's advice here on how to do things and then hopefully we can come up with a guide that uh, is functional without having to send the head off to get all new guides installed. Um, this is the turbo engine. This is how they would have fixed it in the in the 70s. So I don't see why this practice wouldn't work now, right? Plus it costs a lot less and you can pretty much do it at home. So to start things off, uh, Deke says he normally pours an inch of Lucas engine stabilizer or STP into a paint can cup. Well, we have that here. Uh, it, this is uh, Lucas oil engine stabilizer or oil stabilizer. Um, he says, dip your knurling tool in the lube and install it in the guide. Using the adapter and a half inch drill, engage adapter to the knurling tool and turn tool clockwise at 200 to 250 RPM. 
Do not reverse the drill. Okay? Uh, I guess that's probably important because he did put it in here. Uh, run the knurling tool through the guide and remove from other end of the guide. Chuck up the burnishing tool, dip it in the lube, and run it through the guide at 200 to 250 RPM. Do not reverse the drill. Run all the way through the guide, then pull out uh, while still rotating to let the tool come out of the guide. Use caution as tools will be hot to the touch. Okay, so um, he says at the end we use a brush to clean out the guide with brake parts cleaner. Uh, put a drop of oil on the stem and then fit it to the guide. Uh, if somewhat snug in the guide, dip the burnishing tool in the lube and make another pass. So uh, it's, it's that simple, right? But having never done it, I am going to try to be cautious about the thing because I never know how it's going to work out. So our one guide that's bad is here, um, as you can see, I marked it. I did put a video, or not a video, a picture post in the community that showed that the, that the guide itself was egged out. So we'll go ahead and we'll, uh, we'll start the practice of, uh, of what Deke is preaching here, and hopefully we can get a valve guide that's uh, worthwhile. Let's try it out. All right, so What's not written in here is I actually called him afterwards and he said run the the tool from the outside to the inside um, Which <clears throat> I don't think it would really matter, but I think it's going to make it easier to To uh, start the tool because you actually have access to it while it's if it's buried here in in the bowl of the valve It's going to make it really difficult to uh, to try to center it up um, Unless you have a really keen eye so here it will make it a lot easier. Five minutes later. Remember, he said pull it through on the other side. So I'll get something to wipe that off with. But uh, we ran it all the way through, and at 200 to 250 RPM was a bit tough because the clutch of the drill started to slip. So you need something with. I ended up setting it on the highest setting of the drill clutch, and uh, you can see it, it lugs it down pretty good. So for the home engine builder, this is probably the best thing that you could possibly do for guides. I mean, you can try to install some yourself, buy some bronze guides, have them cut down, fit in there, and, and install them with an air hammer. But home-built stuff, this is about as good as it's gonna get. All right, it is hot to the touch. <laughs> All right, so now we have burners for our valve guy. Hopefully we have something worthwhile here. We'll find out. Now he says clean it off with some brake cleaner and it's literally two degrees outside. I am not gonna go to the park store and get some more brake cleaner. I just used it the other day. And so we're gonna try some acetone. I'm sure acetone will clean it up just fine. It's cleaned up. Probably would have been better to have like a cotton piece of rope shoved through there and clean it out real good. But I think that'll get it. And uh, now we can test fit a valve. See what kind of guide surface we have. Ooh, it's moved through there pretty good. Well, it's still a little loose, but it could be just be the valve in this case. We'll try a couple more valves. Find something that tightens up on it. Well, this one seems a lot tighter. Like, too tight, matter of fact. I 
think I gotta run that burnishing tool down again. Clean it out again. Valve. This one's just not going to work. It's just too tight. And that burnishing tool doesn't take enough off. All right, so we got our snap back in our guide. We're going to be able to reuse this set of heads with this guide, uh, regardless of it being damaged. And now the rest of them just go through a piece of cake. I'll, uh, I'll lap every valve in and get a good seat on each one, put the springs retainers on, uh, measure valve spring height, and make sure they're all within a couple thousandths of each other. But other than that, that's how you uh, home repair that valve guide. Burnishing tools, who knew? There was something uh, created a long time ago to do this at home. So there you go. Hopefully you learned something today on Mr. Rodder's Neighborhood. I'll see you later.